So now over here on our Hugo site, we have a pricing page. Now the pricing page has this pricing widget here that looks like these blocks here with different prices, although it's the same price across the board right now, just because it's placeholder content. And then at the bottom, there's a banner here. And now this looks exactly like a component that we've seen before. So on our homepage over here, if we scroll all the way down, we have this banner, it just has some different text. So instead it says, need a larger plan instead of the ready to get started. So we can reuse this component here and the image is even the same, so that makes it really easy. And then we just have to basically make a new component here and we can pull that into our page. Now, the other thing I'm seeing here is this pricing title here. So I just wanna come back and take a look and see our page. So this title here is actually a slightly different style than this title here. So what we could do is we could make this a separate component, like an internal page title, or we could group this title with this component here. So when I'm trying to think about how to break up these components, I really want to see how it's being used across other pages. So for instance, if I go to contact, they're using that same title there, but using a different component down here. And if I go to FAQ, oh, it's taking a long time to load, it seems to be frozen. So I'm just going to come here and inspect the element one more time. I want to make sure that the JavaScript is off for this site. So I'm just going to go to my settings. Okay, make sure JavaScript is still disabled. So that's disabled there. Okay. That's great. Now uh, let's go back over here to our pricing. Okay, that's better. And let's just come back over here and let's inspect this here. And let's get this whole widget. So it looks like the pricing container starts here. So it's this section. And this section up here is the title. Okay, so we can grab this whole section here. And we can actually grab this title because we actually want to put this title across uh, different internal pages as well. So let's start with the title component. I'm going to edit this as HTML. And I'm going to copy this whole title. And I'll go back to my text editor here. And inside my layouts in my components, we have all these components so far. So we might want to call this new one page title dot spelt. And in there, I'm going to paste that HTML. I'm going to format it a little bit. And then instead of a hard coded title here, we want to pull a title out of this. So I can just do something like this, get a title variable. We have to make sure that we are actually coming in here and setting up a script tag to actually get this. So export let title, we can save that. And then over in our content source, so we don't have a page for our pricing yet. So we need a pricing page. So we can create a new page over here and we'll call this, maybe we actually want to create a, a new pages content type. That might make sense. So we have our index for our homepage. We have our blog landing page, which looks a little different than all the other pages, right? So over here, this blog page, although we have the blog title here. And then, these can all be regular standard pages. So why don't we create a new content type called pages? And we'll do the same thing we're doing for our index where we're actually pulling in this information in a component-based way. So it'll look very similar to the index page. Maybe these could all be the same content type. That, that might work fine, but for now, let's just do them as a separate. So we'll come in here and let's create a new content type and I'll create a new terminal here. And I'll plenty new type and I'll call it pages, just we'll do plural. So that creates this new pages folder here, and it creates a new pages.svelte template here. And then inside pages, let's create a couple new files. So let's do a new file called pricing.json and make sure that this is valid JSON and, and save that. And then for our pages, we actually wanna copy what we're already doing for our index. So let's come over here and let's just grab this here and let's put this in our pages template here so now we have components we have all layouts so we're doing the same thing we were doing before that should be fine you can save that so you can see like if we're going to use the same template between our pages and our home page we don't really need to have multiple content types for this so we could actually even get rid of our index content type here we could put an index file inside our pages and as long as we're making these appear right off the root of our base domain, then this would all work out. And maybe I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But for now, let's just get this set up here like this. So we have this going, and then let's go to our pages 
content source and our pricing page. And let's make sure we have the fields we need. So we want to have something actually very similar to our index. So let's take a look at our index here. So we have our components, right? So we can grab something like this and let's copy that. And let's go back to our pricing. And we can come here and we can just, we can actually just paste this. So we want the structure here, we have components, but we don't want any of these components here. We want a different set of components. Now the one component we actually do want is at the very bottom here, we have this call to action. So this is corresponding over here on our site to this call to action at the bottom. And we're going to really be using that again over here at the bottom of the pricing page, we have something very similar. So we'll leave that call to action, but the rest of these can be changed. So let's just grab everything besides that CTA and we'll come up to the top. And we'll get rid of these. And then we can actually come here and we can add a new component. Make sure you put a comma. And the first component's name will be page. What do we call this? We made a component here called page hyphen title. Maybe we want to do underscores. That's how we're doing the other naming convention here. So let's rename this to page title like that. And we'll say this is page underscore title. And page title has some fields. So what fields did it have? It had a title field, fields. And we'll say the one field in here is a field called title. And in this case, the title field is pricing. Okay, so we have that. And then we have the CTA. And then we need one more component that we haven't actually created yet. And it's the component that looks like this. It's the actual pricing widget here, right? So maybe we could just call this pricing. So the component name here, name would be pricing. Now we haven't created this yet, so we have to, we have to create it. And then what kind of information does this need? It needs a bunch of items, right? And items have title, price, description and features and then a call to action link. So there's a bunch of things we need to do there. Maybe before we do this, let's just make sure that this is working. I'm going to just get rid of this for one second and I'm going to save this. Make sure the site's rebuilding over here. Okay, that looks like it built and come here, reload this page. And let's come up and see if we can get to, well, this pricing actually is not going to be right, right? Because if we go here, it's going to be a 404 not found. That's because this actually is currently living at pages pricing. Should be. Let's take a look. Make sure our site builds. And we have pricing.json pages. Let's make sure we look at what our routes are doing over here. We don't have a pages override, so our route should be going to pages pricing.json. Well, this should work. And we should have our pages.svelte file over here. Should be generally working. Okay, so now it's working. I don't know. I must not have saved one of those files. But so basically, we have a pricing page now, but it lives at this URL. And we want it to just live at this URL like this, right? So we have to do a route override. So let's go back over to our plenty.json file. And let's add a new route override. So inside our routes, we'll say, pages and instead of having that forward slash pages, we're just going to immediately go into the file name, just like that. So we can save that and I can reload this page now. Oops, I actually have to change this route and we have this pricing page now it lives off here. So I can go back to my home page and I can go to pricing I can toggle between those, go to blog, and that all works. So blog, pricing page, okay. Let's come back here, let's get out of some of this stuff. And let's open up our pricing page again. All right, so now we have some of our pricing stuff coming through. Now let's just make this next component. So let's grab this component here. And let's get the whole section, so we don't want this title section above, we want this section below it. Let's edit this as HTML. 
And we can copy that whole thing. And we can come over here into our components. We can add a new component here. We'll call this pricing.svelte. And I'll just paste the HTML in there. We'll do some cleanup. Now, we actually only need one of these, right? So this is going to be a loop. So let's come here. Let's find where one of these starts. So something like this. This card here. Okay. And we can get rid of these other ones here. So let's come up here. Actually, we have to know which... We have to know one of these classes because one of these is going to be larger than the other, right? So this middle one here is larger than the ones on the side, or at least it's it's displayed a little differently. So we have to know which class that is. We can add that in later, actually. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm just going to copy this stuff and get rid of it. So we'll get rid of these other ones. I think it's something like that. And maybe that looks right. Okay, so we'll save that. And in our pricing for now, let's just do something like this. Let's grab this again where we have this set to name. And the component is called pricing that we just called it. Now, um, for now, we'll give it fields, but our fields will just be an empty object. And then make sure we put a comma here. So this is valid JSON. Save this. Let's come back to our site and let's reload this. Okay, so we have one plan here. It's missing some styles, I think, but it is kind of close. Actually, it's pretty good. The 49, this isn't correct size. This is a little off, but the rest of the stuff looks decent. Now yeah, this might be a little off too. And this is not a button. So we have to do a couple things here, but let's, um. Let's actually try to get some details from our content source before we style this completely, and then we can go from there. So let's go back to our content source. Now, we want this to kind of look like our index. So our index has some content sources here, like when it has items, and it looks like this, right? It's like an array of items. So let's just copy this items here. Maybe we can kind of do something similar. So let's just do something like this. Copy this array of items, and let's first of all expand this and then let's put our field items like that. Now, our items for our pricing here are a little different. So we have, uh, maybe this is title. So we have title. Then we have price. So let's add another price. And we can say, $49, and then, you know, this is a uh, frequency, I guess. So $49 per what? Um, we can just call this interval. We'll say interval here is monthly, or per month. And then we have a description which we have, a, we'll just leave it as body. And then we have, um, let's call this features. So this will become, instead of icon, we'll say features. Features like this. And features is gonna be an array of items itself. And this will just be an array of strings. So we can do stuff like this. We can say express service. Customs clearance. Oh no. And time critical services. Okay. And then we have one more thing here. So we have a link. Let's say, let's call it link. And link has a title and a location. So we have title, get started for free. And the URL, 
in this case can just be, I don't know if this goes anywhere. Yeah, we'll just send this to the home page. Okay, great. So we have that set up and we actually want a couple of these items. So we can come here, we can copy this a couple of times. First, actually let's come and get rid of all these old ones here. So let's get rid of these. And we're gonna have three of these items. So we'll come down here and we'll say one, two, and three. And then at the bottom, the last one, we gotta make sure we have no comma because JSON is finicky like that. And we can save that. And then let's come up here and let's just update some of the information. So this is no longer clean code. This is basic plan. We have 49 per month. The description is best for small individuals. We have the features listed out correctly and we have the link in this one correctly. Okay, so that's good. Let's go to the next one. The title of this next one is Professional Plan. And let's make this first one $19 a month. The second one, 49 and update this description well, let's uh so the first three items are the same but they have two additional items so let's add those Oops. and best dashboard okay and then this last one here so get started for free, it says the same thing. Okay, that's fine. And then this last one here is business plan. Do the same thing. Update the title. Let's make this one 99 per month. And this one, let's say, that's for large, let's say enterprises. And the services here are the same as the first one. Okay, that's fine. And get started for free, so that looks fine. Let's just save this, and let's go to our template over here. And we have to make sure that we're going through a loop now, right? So we actually have to get this information from our fields. So we actually have to come up here. We'll add a script tag. We'll export let and let's make sure we're getting the title, price, interval, body features. Title, price, interval, body features. What else do we have? Features, link. Okay, so we have that information. And we can start doing things like this. Come here, we could say for each, or actually it's just an each loop in spell. So each item, which I think we forgot, items as item. Now make sure we have that. So we have, oh yeah, these are, these are all in the items. Ah, that's what it is. So the only field we really have here is items. So I can change that, sorry. Let's come back up here. This is just items. So for each items as item, and we'll come down here and we'll close this out at the bottom of this block here. So for each items as item, we can come here, we can get the item title. We can get the item price. And the item interval. And 
and the item body. And then we can do another loop here. So we could say, now we want to go through each, each, and what the items, what is it called? Each item dot features, item dot features as feature. And we'll come down here, let's get rid of this and do this. And we'll say, and we only need one of these again. And so we can say, just print each feature as a list item here, like this. Feature. And then at the bottom here, we have a link. So this, for each one of these, is going to be something like this. Let's do item.link.url. You know, we're going into this object here, so we're getting the item link URL and the item link title. So we'll come over here and do item link title here. Item dot link dot title. Okay. And if I save that, let's see what we're working with over here. And come back to our pricing page and do a reload on this. Wow, okay, so that worked and it automatically did the sizing thing there. I was surprised that that happened. So some of the shadowing and things like that are off, but we can update that stuff. So we're getting our actual content, basic plan, professional and business plan. And we have our different items, we have our links, and even the hover behavior here seems to be kind of working. So that looks similar to the hover behavior here. The colors are a little off and some of the styles are off, but that might just be style overrides that we can add so we can do some of that stuff. So that's pretty cool. And the page looks pretty good for the most part. Okay. So let's clean some of this up. So let's take a look at some of these styles. Let's look at what's making this big text here. So there's a class price here. And we have a style sheet here called inline, but it's just doing something like this. So we can actually come here and we can do this ourselves. So if we come here, we have the classes already added here. So for instance, if we look at the price section, we have the class price there. So we can make a style section down here. Just do something like this, style. And this will be scoped to our specific component, but we can use that class still. And we'll just add this information in here. And what else we have? And then some of this text is all grayed out. That's grayed out here, but this does not seem to be grayed out. So let's take a look what's making that gray. So it looks like a global style here that's going over the body text. So for instance, you can see here, it's making all the body text gray. So we could do that globally. I don't know why we hadn't done that previously globally. So let's just for now, let's, let's save this. Let that rebuild and come back over here and let's reload this. So we're starting to get closer on that. Um, let's take a look at our global styles here. First, I'm going to come and save our changes. So I'll git add, git commit, and I'll say version 0.4.x updates plus pricing page. We could even push that to the main branch if we wanted. And if we come back, so we're trying to change some of this. So we're going to look at our global styles here. So we set up a style sheet here, this global spelt. We could come in here and we could just find the body. If there is one, there's no body declared. So what we could do here is we could just come and we could do something like this. Come here, add another global declaration like this, global, say body. And we could get that color that we're getting from over here. So they're just setting it to 777 gray. We'll say color. Save that. Come back over here. And now if we reload this, these should become gray. Okay, those became gray. That's good. That's what we wanted. Okay. 
That's looking pretty good. Now let's uh, get these buttons working a little bit better. So we have this declaration here, so we can grab something like this. Let's go back to our pricing.svelte. Let's add that here. So this might be something we want to do globally at some point. We can just leave it local to this file for now. Save that. And let's come back here and do the same thing for this one. So it probably has a very similar thing. Let's first see if those came through. Okay. It's kind of working. Let's grab these styles here. And let's add these as well. Now, Svelte is telling me here that this button primary, this class here, is not available in my markup. So you can see here when I tried to add that, it's not finding it. That's because it's only happening on the middle loop, right? So we don't have it added all the time. We have the outline primary, but button primary is not always added. So we need a conditional way to add that, right? So we have to know what version of the loop we're on here. So we can get that iteration here. So we can know which item we're on here. So we can say item comma i. That will give us the iterator. And then we could come down here and we could say something like this. If i equals one, because the first time around it's gonna be zero, the second time is gonna be one, and the last time is gonna be two, then um, we'll do something else. And I messed this up. This is a, an if statement like this else statement like this, and an end if like this. Okay, so we can grab this, and let's indent this a little differently. Let's grab this line here, and let's also put it here. And in this case, we want this to be button primary, instead of button outline primary. So we can just say button primary, and we can save that. And let's take a look back over here when we reload our page. OK, so now we're seeing it. So you can see that we're getting something like that. Now these are still, they have a little bit of style that still needs to be taken care of. For instance, the text in here is blue, although it should be this greenish color. And when it does a hover, it should be green as well. So this is working fine. But these need to be changed. And I actually, I think, if I come over here, I think this is already being applied globally. So we can come in here and we probably don't need this scope to this specific component. Let me just double check that. I'm gonna save that, come back over here. Let's reload this page. Yeah, so that's already coming through, that's okay. So text is black, let's take a look here. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Let's look over here, inspect this button. Yeah, so we have this button outline primary. So we can actually do this, and let's just move this all to the global scope because we might need style like this again in the future. So let's put it here for now and then I'll move it. Okay, so I'm going to paste this in here. So let's put there, and then let's grab this whole section here and let's move this to the global scope. So I'm gonna grab this and you can save this again. And let's go to global styling. Let's just go down here to the bottom. Let's make sure we have these buttons correct. So let's paste these in. And then let's just fix this styling here. Let's say, give me the global scope. And make sure that we set this button style before. Let's fix the indentation. We'll do the same thing on this one. So we get the global scope. Let's fix the indentation here, like that. Okay, now if we save that, come back over here and reload our Plenty site. Okay, we're getting closer. So we don't have the hover behavior yet, but now the text is coming through black and the border is the right color. So we just have to get that hover behavior. So let's come here, let's make sure that this button's selected and let's add a hover and select hover so we can implement that style. And you can see here now that we have this information here, so let's go to this before. We have a height, a width that we're setting. And so we can add that. 
Let's do that. Come back over here. So we'll paste this in, format it a little differently. And we need more than that, so we have to come here, see what this is doing. Something like this. Okay. And let's just format this with a global. And save. Okay. Now let's come back to our site and reload this. Okay, that's working now. Great. So the last thing we have to do here is we have to get this border shadow right. And I actually hit that this here, so this box shadow. So you can see on this element here, we have some box shadow. Well, so there's a little box shadow that is added on those buttons. I can see right here, right below it, there's a little bit of a box shadow. I'm not really sure. I guess that's nice. I don't know. Let me see ours. Hmm. That's something I might make a creative decision, although it looks like ours is getting the, a little bit of a shadow there as well. At least on the, the borders of this edges here, it's getting some shadow. Eh, that might be something that I would, I, would, I would actually remove, but that's fine for now. That's okay. Let's take a look at this element here though. So we want the whole card here. So this whole body card. You can see we have the border here, so so this is the shadow here, I think. We can grab this and grab this style. We could put in our component directly. So again, we're gonna get out of the global styles here. We'll go back to our component. And let's add some styles like that, just like this. And we can save that. So shadow large, okay, again, this is showing that this uh, style is not applied up here. So we wanna do something like we did before. So this is around the card border. So we have card shadow, and we want a shadow large here instead. So what I might do here is I might actually just come to my content source. And I know that this professional plan in the middle here has that feature, and I could actually add something like this. I could say class. And I could say LG. And for these other ones, we'll have no class. So we'll just leave them empty. And come down here and we'll do the same here. So class, and this will be empty. Now this is Maybe not the, the best way to do it, but it's a quick way to show a different way how to do it. So we come in here and we could say, actually we want this one to be hyphen LG because it's going to get combined with this class here. So this is shadow, but over here we have shadow hyphen LG for the middle one. So when we're in here, we'll say item dot class, not items, item.class, we want the individual item. And in the middle one, it should get the LG and the rest it should be blink, so it should just come across as shadow. Let's take a look and see how that changes our display here. Okay, so you can see now that the shadow is coming out a little bit now on the side here. It's not exactly what we need here, so let's take a look and make sure we're getting everything we need here. So we also have border zero. So that gets rid of the borders there. So we probably want border zero as well. We can do that easy enough. Come back here to our content source. And we'll just put a space and we'll say border zero. Save that. That should add that class to us. So that will get rid of that hard border. Okay, so that got rid of the, the hard border there. This is looking closer, but we're not getting all the box shadow, it looks like it should be a little narrower, potentially. So we could have something like, wrapper class, 
is in card classes. Put all these in the wrapper classes. You could say down here, wrapper classes. And this should be card classes now. And we'll grab the same thing here. And this actually has to be classes. We'll do the same thing at the top here. Now, I'm not sure I'm in love with this idea of putting all the classes in the content like this. Eh. Um, I'd rather do this in the template and have better conditional logic, but for now, let's just do it like this. And we'll add item dot wrapper classes and this will become item dot card classes See what's happening. It doesn't seem to like that. So let's see what goes on here. Come back, and refresh this. Okay, it's happening an error. Maybe this has to be an underscore. It does not like a hyphen for those variable names. Okay. So let's save that and let's come back over here and let's change these. Okay, come back and reload. All right, so we're getting some of those classes now. Looks like there's still a little bit of a gap. So we need to pull this together. Looks like where the call recommended comes in. I thought we had put that on there. Let's take a look. Oh, I wonder if this is an overridden style. It is. So do you know what? Doing this is probably not necessary, adding all those classes. We have them now, so we can do that. Hmm. I wonder if it's better to just do this in CSS classes. Well, we're there now. Let's just come back and let's do this for now. Come back here. Reload. Okay. So now we're getting there. That looks very similar to this, I think. Great, so I think we're there for the pricing page pretty much. There's probably a couple little tweaks we can do. I think this title's a little big, so we could go and see those style overrides. But for now, I think we're in okay shape. Or maybe we should just do that. Let's just take a look real quick at the title. So we have this display three font size rem. So let's come here, let's copy this. Let's take a look over here, let's inspect. So we have the 4.5 right? So it needs to be 3.5. Let's come back over here and let's go to that component that we created. So we created the page title component and let's do something like this. We can scope style directly to this. So we can say style and that should be scoped just to that component there. Now if I come back and I reload this, that should be smaller. Perfect. So that looks better. And now we're getting a site that looks very similar to the site over here. Okay.